eyes got red big, but Jesus got up. Amen. And so should you. Hey, turn your name and say, Jesus got up. Jesus got up. Some of y'all just lying and saying it. Jesus got up. Jesus got up. And so should you. And so should you. I'm getting up. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Look, all I know is that there is a significance um, for uh, Jesus. And every time you honor God with a sacrifice, how many know you can't beat God's sacrifice? What he does in your life. So on this part also, I want you to know that it also talks about the fact that my wife and I are getting ready to start our 35th pastoral anniversary. 35 years. I can believe it. Many of you know I just turned 45. So 35 years is a miracle. It's a miracle. Um, but look on that flyer because our anniversary, we have some of the top preachers in our country coming for our revival. All nights of revival will be here in Port Norris. We're going to be going live, virtually, uh, and in person. But make sure you're here for that. And that Sunday morning, uh, as you can see, a good friend, Irving Fryer, will be here to close out our anniversary. Amen. Um, so a lot of good activities. Uh, the world is opening up. It's time to give God uh, the glory that he deserves. And one of the things, slightly give me one of the envelopes that we had out. There's an envelope and it says, in-person giving. I want to take a moment for those who joined us uh, live or by virtual, that we want you to know that uh, on Saturday we just did our uh, celebration of our the, uh, building new lives. Thank you, David. Building new lives. And what's great about this is we had about 60 volunteers that have been going for four or five years. So we have got to do feeding, making sure our community is well. And see, I always tell people, you don't, you don't, you don't clap till you get hungry. But I can remember being poor. In our early, in our early marriage, I remember just making it to my grandmother's to borrow five dollars so I could get gas. So until you've ever been in a hard time, we don't appreciate it. But how many know it's good when we can help other folk better? So child, I'm proud of you. You should have saw the volunteers. These people just hungry to continue to bless God. But giving, you need to know that serving God, the virtual broadcast, everything you say costs money. Many of you give. So this is not for people who give online. Uh, those of you out there, you can give online. You'll see the ways to give. Um, it's already on our website. You can see ways to give, and you'll be able to get blessed. But in our giving, for those of you who haven't used the kiosk and you come in, I don't want you to come to church trying to come for free. Right. Don't look at me strange. I know. And why I say, well, this is what I want to tell somebody. You don't go anywhere else for free. That's right. Now listen to me when I say that. Because you wouldn't be jumping, I told you about God getting ready to give you something. Yes. Y'all can't scare me today. Because the reality is, the more you bless God, somebody ought to be able to give that back to you. The more God's going to bless you. So we don't try to do a lot about giving in here, but we don't want anyone to miss the opportunity. Yes. So that's why this is just called an in-person giving envelope. And, if, and you know, Shiloh, we don't talk a lot about giving because we have a church that understands Amen. the power of God. Amen. And now everyone on your way out, you'll stick that form Pastor Brown talked about. And you'll put the form in there. I mean, you'll put your giving in. If you don't give online, if you haven't already mailed in, you'll put your offering in there. All right, there's a word from God. Let's get to the word of the Lord. The Spirit of God is in this place right now. Will you stand with me and join me in the Gospel of John, chapter 9? This is Palm Sunday. We are going to preach a message that preceded Christ going and marching in the streets. When you have... John's Gospel, chapter 9. Will you stand to your feet? John's Gospel, chapter 9. Alright, don't tell me to me because I was talking about giving. Bless you. John's Gospel, chapter 9. I'm going to do the ASB today. Verse 1. And as he passed by, he saw a man blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he should be born 
alone. Jesus answered, Neither did this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. We must work. God said, we must work. Isn't it something that God didn't say, I must work? I want you guys to know that God's plan of building the kingdom includes all of us. God said, we must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. Before I die, before I get to the cross. The night cometh when no man can work. When I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, made clay of the spittle, and anointed his eyes with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went away, therefore, and washed, and came Seeing, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your anointing that's already here. You already blessed your word. Lord, help me to be clear and bring clarity to what you want to deliver to your people's heart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. I'm tagging this text today with this thought. As long as the Spirit of God will allow. Follow through or let it go. Follow through. Or let it go. Quit playing with God. Quit acting like you want a blessing if you're not going to do what God said. Follow through or let it go. I love to read. I used to say that I read in my spare time, but how many know there's no such thing as spare time anymore? But when I do read, I make sure I don't just put any kind of junk in my spirit. Sometimes the very detriment of our success in our walk is what we put in our minds. So I make sure when I do read, I like to read material about everyday miracles. I don't know if you know it or not, but there are people who every day are doing what seemingly seems impossible. I'm talking about people who are confronted with an obstacle that they have decided, I will not allow myself to be defeated. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody who says that no matter what happens, I'm going to get what God has for me. This person is a person who made up in their mind that I will not only overcome, but I will actually see and get a miracle. These people are people who never give up. They are the ones who mirror the words of Ralph Waldo Emerson when he said, What lies behind us and what lies before us are teeny matters to what lies within us. If you're the kind of person, you're not getting your blessing because you let everything in your past mess you up. That's the little thing. That can destroy your walk. If you're the kind of person that you can't see your future, how many know in God we always got a future? So you mess yourself up. But what lies in you? There's some people here now that can tell you the only reason I made it, I had to bear down. In some times in my life, there are folk that don't listen to what other folk are saying. What am I talking about? Uh, the auto magnet, Henry Ford, said it this way. When everybody told him it's impossible to build an automobile, he said these words. He said, I discovered that nobody really knows what is or isn't possible. Yeah. Can I tell you something? The only people that know what's possible in your life is you and God. If you're sitting in here and you came looking for a miracle and a blessing, how many know I'm not worried about what other people think about what I came to get? I believe God is able to give and do what I say. I believe God's going to do what he said. We're ready for to believe God's going to do what he said he's going to do. But if we talk about miracles, you got to go to the Word of God. Because in the Word of God, all over the Word of God, it talks about the impossible being happening. Because God is a God the impossible. He makes sure, and, and I'm going to have to make a case for the impossible, because some of us here can, we are the actual evidence of God doing impossibilities. If your neighbor don't know by now, I'm not going to help you get there, but somebody know, if they knew your story, 
This is the answer of life. You knew my story. You know that it was an impossible God that made me to make it this far. There's some times when I should have been left. There's some times when I should have taken a detour. There's some times when the enemy should have won, but somehow the Lord brought me through. There's two more folks that want to testify that no matter what it was, I know that my life represents the impossibilities of God. And when we talk about that, it's all time to pass. And one of my favorites is Mark chapter 9. I need you to go there. Mark chapter 9, verse 22, is when uh, we look at the chapter where Jesus had gone to be transfigured. And he took his posse with him, you know, Peter, James, and John. And there was left there was his other disciples. So remember that the man came and said, can you cast the demon out of my son? I, I need to stop there and tell somebody, y'all know demons are still roaming around. You know somebody now, I need to tell you that uh, what, D, what um, Denzel told Will Smith at the Oscars. You know when you get to your highest point, you know when it's really God getting ready to really bless you, that's when the devil comes and try to get a hold of you. All I'm saying that for is there's somebody in here, you knew humanly you shouldn't have made it through what you made it through, but you're sitting in here now. You better watch out that it's not a dark spirit trying to stop you from giving God the glory for what he's done in your life.
the other side. I believe God always has the other side. Oh, I wish I could preach that right now. There's the other side of what you're going through now. And if you let God hold on to it, it's more blessed than the side you're in now. But listen to this story. Her name is Jan Turner. She's not nobody special. Nobody wrote a book about her. But this story came up because I like to read. And it talks about how she did the miraculous. And it was told to her. I'm reading as she told it to a reporter. Listen to it. I was a typical single parent mother, raising my two boys, Tyler and Cody. Life was good. We were busy. I was all the time running around with the boys, taking them here and there. Things were going so well, I even thought about adopting another child. But one Sunday, in November, I was playing with the choir in the front of the church. I felt weak, suddenly dizzy, and nauseated. I struggled down the aisle. I motioned for the boys to meet me out, to meet me outside. We got outside and got in the car, and I drove home in all kind of pain, barely making it. When I walked in the house, I crawled into the bed. But by the evening, I knew I needed some real help. I called for an ambulance. By the time I got to the hospital, I was comatose. So the reporter picks up the rest of the story here. Her blood pressure had dropped so much that her body was already shutting down. She found out that she had pneumococcal pneumonia. It is a bacterial infection that attacks all the body systems. It's the same bacteria that took out the life of the mother's creator, Jim Henderson. One of the most deadly effects of this disease is it activates the clotting mechanism of your blood and clogs up the blood vessels. Because there was no blood flow in her hands and feet, this young single mother who was there developed gangrene in her hands, in her feet, in all of her extremities. She was doing well one day, you better watch out. And the next moment she was sitting there with gangrene. Two weeks later, they cut off her hands, her feet, and all of her extremities. They cut off her hands up to her elbow. They cut off her legs up to her shin. And she said she remembers that she was laying in the hospital. She was sitting there. She cried, oh, God, please, God, how can I live without my arms or my legs or my feet or my hands? I'll never walk again. I'll never be able to play my instruments. I play the piano. I play the guitar. I play the trumpet. I'll never be able to hug my sons again or take care of them. Oh, God, don't let me have to live the rest of my life dependent on other people. Watch the miracle of God. Getting ready to come into her life. Six weeks later, after the surgery, with her dangling limbs, the doctor came in with a surprise and said, you're eligible to get prosthetic surgery. But she was so depressed, she didn't know whether she should do that. But she grabbed her Bible so she could go to the Lord. When she went to the Lord, her Bible opened up to Romans 12 and 2, where it said, be not conformed to this world. Oh, 
serve a God who is possible. Anything you have today is possible. I dare you to reach out now and grab for anything in your life. See, some of us are so programmed, we can't even get our minds to think that I can have my dream again, that I can have my blessing again. But today, God told me to share with you. If you decide, I'm going to follow through. It looks bad. You gotta understand. 
going through what you're going through. Quit telling God. God said, trust me or let it go. Quit yeah. whining about it. Follow through or let it go. Look at the text. Look at the text. So three things I want you to write down. First thing is, rejoice because God chose you for his plan. Resolve to follow God to your purpose. Yes. I'm interchanging plan and purpose because they're the same. I'm alliterating here. Rejoice because God chose you for his plan. Resolve to follow God to your purpose and remain faithful in your position. A lot of times our blessing didn't come because everybody can steal our joy. Yeah. Yeah. So we got to figure out where we are. Everybody got that? Got the points? I'll say it one more time. You got to learn to rejoice. You... Always rejoice because God chose you. Secondly, you gotta resolve, I'm gonna follow God no matter how bad it gets. Thirdly, you gotta remain faithful to your testimony. I ain't never seen so up and down many Christians in my life. One day you talking about how good God is, next day you can't get anything out your mouth. You gotta hold on to your testimony. Let's talk about it. The gospel of John is unlike the other gospels. It's not synoptic. It doesn't see the way Matthew, Mark, and Luke does. The Gospel of John is not like that. John is interested in one thing. Yes. Verse 20, chapter 20, verse 31 of John's Gospel says, and the only purpose I'm writing is so you know that Jesus is God. Yes. And because he's God, you can get life if you trust him. Amen. And then he said, I don't do what the rest of them do. I don't teach parables. I don't go around teaching about a whole bunch of uh, casting out demons and miracles. He said, I'm not interested in talking about the kingdom of God. He said, I got one purpose to show you God is the, the Jesus is divine. And not only that, this he only did seven miracles, and they were sign miracles. This is the sixth of the seven sign miracles. This sixth miracle is to show you that Jesus is divine. And in this miracle that he did here, he was letting you know there's a lot of controversy stirred up by the scribes and Pharisees because of the fact that he was walking around talking about he was God. If you go to chapter 8 before we get to this chapter, there was a woman who, who was caught uh, in adultery. And because they were trying to get Jesus, they brought this woman to Jesus. In 8 chapter. Well, you know the scribes and Pharisees just jumped all over him in that verse. That's when he made them drop their rocks. You don't like it when you, people, people don't like it when you make them drop their rocks. <laughs> and after they dropped their rocks, he went on talking about how he was God. And how the, that his father had sent him here. And he could talk about who he is because of the fact that he came from the father. They said, I know you got a demon now. But you're talking about you come from the father. He said, no, Abraham rejoiced to see my dad. They said, you ain't even 50 years old yet. How are you going to say Abraham rejoiced to see your dad? He said, because father Abraham knew that I was God. And whoever believes in me will never die. But the last verse of chapter 8, you'll see where they stoned him and threw him out the temple. Yeah. And that's where we are right now. Jesus, I gotta throw this in, doesn't get upset by what happens to him. Too many saints missing their joy. As soon as something bad happens in your life, you forget all the blessings you had before the bad happened. But Jesus just got thrown out of the temple and didn't flinch a muscle. He kept doing what he was supposed to do. He walked out of the temple. Y'all see this? He walked out of the temple and there was a blind man sitting outside the temple. Now we don't know. Great this first point that you have to learn to rejoice because God chose you. He saw this blind man, the text says, and he stopped. He was a blind man born from birth. I need you to understand something. He was blind from birth. No. That means this man did all of a sudden lose his eyesight no. slowly or gradually. No. He had never seen the sunshine. No. He heard a bird, but he never saw a bird. No. He never saw his mama or daddy. No. He never saw colors glisten anymore. No. This was a man who was born blind, and Jesus let the light into his life. And so Jesus chose a blind man because Jesus is the one who always turns darkness to light. Let me, let me give you some of this so you know I'm talking about you right now. Jesus chose us because he knew, I'll say it this way, anybody sitting in here is not saved. You're just as bad off spiritually blind as this blind man was physically blind because you just don't know. You don't know. You can sit there and judge us, but you just don't know. You don't know how good it feels to wake up in the morning and sit and know you got a God on your side. You don't know how good it feels. They ain't got money in your pocket, got a roof over your head, and they threatening to take your house, but you lay down in peace because you know your God will supply your needs. Somebody say, you just don't know. You don't know what it means to be riding down the road all of a sudden in hell and something hits your body, but you can already get on your knees and pray and believe there's a doctor. Who knows? 
how they knew that he was born blind from birth because unless he was sitting out there talking about it, that's when I believe Jesus told him, quit talking about it. That's right. You need to do something. That's right. I'm glad the man has decided he was going to listen to Jesus as we'll find out in the text. Because somehow Jesus found out he was born blind from birth. But Jesus chose him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Don't you think this poor blind man? What you ought to be glad that Jesus chose you. All I'm saying is every now and then you get in church and we get to thinking about what we want God to do next. Can I help you, honey? You better be glad he did something first. He picked you up out of what you were in, chose you, and when he chose you, that means what he did, he chose to have, he chose to protect you. And some of you in here, God protected you some of the worst times in your life. He chose to give you favor. Where the folks that know I've gotten favor in my life because of God. He chose Yeah. 
many years, we were at home worshiping. Watch this. A man was praying when they said, God, destroy all my enemies. Uh. And he said, God, I need you to destroy them all. Make them not mess with me again. And all of a sudden, he said, God, I want you, matter of fact, I want you to send a swarm of locusts on all my enemies. Jesus. All of a sudden, a big swarm of locusts came down on him. Uh. They started chasing him around. He was running, calling on God. Locusts all over his head. He running, calling on God. And God looked at him and said, haven't you got it yet, fool? You your own worst enemy. You're the one sitting there begging and whining all the time instead of following through. You remember when the men tore up the roof yeah. and lowered their friend down in front of Jesus? Yeah. Because they said, we're going to follow through. Church full. We're getting in. Yeah. My friend said he wanted healing. Jesus is inside. We're going to tear something up to get to Jesus. I ain't got no church here with me yet. I want the people that tear something up to get to Jesus. They, they tore that roof up. When he saw their faith. Oh, Alright. I must have read that wrong. It might have said when he saw their tears. Oh, That's what y'all think. I'm just got, when he saw how stressed out their life was. Lord, I'm so stressed. Or, or when he saw how, how hard it was that they were going through. No, the verse said when he saw their faith. Follow through. Everything else is a waste of your time. Right now, y'all just don't know. 
And the third thing he says is power. I believe he's able, no matter what I get into, to get me out of it because of his power. This blind man did something we don't do. Three things. He went, he washed, he came back seeing. I need you to understand something. When he went, can you imagine how he went? He went with mud on his eyes. That means that he couldn't see. All he could do was remember God's voice. Okay, that got lost on somebody. Let me say it again. Sometimes you won't be able to see, but please remember what he said. Sometimes it will be so dark, all you got is what he said. Your life will be so messed up, you don't have nothing but the word in your heart. It don't look like it's working, but you got to hold on to it. Can you see this man? He had to walk. The, the actual pool of Siloam actually was a waterfall that dropped into a pool about 80 yards from the temple. He walked over there with mud in his eyes. Sometimes you got to walk with mud in your eyes. He got to the pool, washed it off, came back. I told you this man never seen come happen. What do you think happened first time? He saw the sunshine. Wow. He had felt warm on his face, but he had never seen the sun. What about when he saw the colors of flowers? Mm -hmm. Same thing will happen to you if you do what God said. You know what happened? You'll walk around and say, oh, this is what real peace feels like. Mm -hmm. This is what it means by you can be hurting but still have joy. Mm -hmm. You don't learn that until you can see. Jack Canfield of Chicken Soup for the Soul said he was coming home from a baseball game from work and he saw some kids playing a little league in a baseball game and these kids playing a baseball game he decided to sit and watch. So he moved and got a seat right behind the first baseline. When he sat down, he asked a little boy in front of him, what's the score? Little boy turned around with a big smile on his face. Uh, it's the first inning but we lose it 14 to nothing. Jack got confused and said, well, um, why are you smiling? You don't look too discouraged. The boy scratched his head and said, discouraged? Why should I be discouraged? It's only the first inning, and we even got up the bat. I want somebody to know God and say, it's only the first inning. You ain't even had God up to the plate yet. Some of y'all sitting there to give up, but you got to be like this boy. Even when it looks like nothing's happening, you got to know as soon as God shows up. And you'll get your blessing. Follow. The last point. Rejoice. Resolve. And then finally, remain faithful to your testimony. I only have to preach this. You start playing Dion, please. Hold on to your testimony. The rest of this story is about a man who been blind all his life, start pimping. I'm here, I, I, I couldn't see. And I couldn't see. But I see you see me walking. I'm not walking like this no more. No, no, no. I'm walking like this. <laughs> you made those bones, hey. Hey, you over there see that? Well, where are real people at? When you blind, you got joy. He was starting to walk up to him and he's first about, ah, but that's why that's more blind, baby. He said, yes, me. Right here. What happened? Jesus did it. <laughs> to describe the Pharisees, he's calling him and said, give me that testimony. He's a sinner. He said, look, I don't care if he's a sinner or not. I was blind and now I see. And Jesus showed up. I believe when you're faithful, Jesus shows up. And he said, everybody stand to your feet. Jesus said, you believe? I watched you. But I need to make sure you follow through. Isn't it something with all the man had done, Jesus still asked him, do you believe? Because God tests our faith by seeing it will follow through. And the man said, I believe. And he fell down and worshipped God. The best way you can show God, no matter how bad it gets, that you won't quit, is to be a worshiper that will worship in season and out of season. Every head bowed, every eye closed. So 
somebody in here that said, look, follow through or let it go. Could I be like, I can't give you what you need. The problem is you won't follow through on the thing. Dust off your dreams, give them back to me, and I will bless you. No matter how far gone it is, maybe you got distracted for a little while, but get your faith back, follow through, and I'm going to give you what you need. Oh, every head is down. Every eye is closed. Somebody in here said, look, I, I might have got distracted. I might be, you know, got a little out of my faith. But you know what, God? I'm going to follow through because there's some things I want. I want you to lift your hand right now. You say, I'm going to follow through. I need prayer. I see one. I see two. Oh, you got to pray. I see another one right there. I see one right there. Come on, y'all praise God. I love you. Somebody else is a pastor. You know what? God, it must have been me. I need that prayer. Lift your hand right now. I need, I need, I need the Lord. I need a prayer for follow through. I see your hands. Is there somebody else? Lift your hand. You say, I need it. Maybe there's somebody here that gave up on a dream. Everybody who raised their hand, come to the altar right now. I want y'all to get to God some praise. 